Let's take a quick tour of Nginx configuration so you know where stuff is if you ever need to debug some issues in Nginx. Now we're on a Debian or Ubuntu server, so some things I show you will be kind of specific to that, but for the most part, everything will be generic to whatever server you're using with Nginx. So all configuration is basically almost always in the Etsy Nginx directory. And inside of here, we have a bunch of files and directories. The main file to care about is nginx.conf because that'll always be the main file that Nginx loads. The stuff inside of nginx.conf will then load other configurations elsewhere, um, usually out of the Etsy Nginx directory. So we can go ahead and just take a quick look at that and we'll see um, just a few things here. One is that one of the first things it does is include stuff out of the modules enable directory. And that just includes uh, like the HTTP module and whatever other modules that Nginx uses because it has a module based architecture. Uh, so this will be things like geolocation modules or you know, there's a whole host of uh, modules that it might include. And then we have the HTTP block, which is the majority of the configuration that we care about. And inside of here, it just does a bunch of configuration I'm not going to get into, but it includes some other stuff like our MIME types directory, which um, can take a file name and guess the MIME type based on the extension of the file name. And SSL configurations, access log configurations, gzip configurations, and most importantly, virtual host configs, which it loads out of two places. Uh, one is anything that ends in .conf in the conf.d directory. And Otherwise, anything that's in sites enabled, no matter what the file name is, right? It doesn't have to end in .conf. That is all inside of this HTTP block. Um, and so any of the configurations loaded in here are going to be in context of that HTTP block. Now, what do I mean by in context? Um, well, some configurations in Nginx have to live inside of context of something. And one of those contexts is like the HTTP block. There's also a location block. There's also server blocks, all that good stuff. Um, inside of our configurations for sites, all the stuff we put in there would typically be inside of a server block. Server blocks are all loaded inside of HTTP blocks. If we check out Nginx configuration for certain things, we'll see that it actually shows where these things belong. So this is an example of the location block. Typically, we, we in most examples of Nginx, will see a location block inside of a server block. And that's what this shows you as well. Location blocks, where we say like location, uh, you know, the root URI or whatever URI we're talking about, belongs in a server block, but they can also be inside of other location blocks, right? So that's what this context bit means if you ever find yourself trying to understand the Nginx configuration. Another point about loading configuration, and that's kind of specific to Ubuntu and Debian servers, is how there these sites enabled directories. And up here we saw there's modules enabled. There is actually, uh, modules available and sites available. Inside of these directories are kind of real files, configuration files, but they're available. They're not necessarily used. The stuff inside of the enabled directories are used. Those are what's loaded out of the configuration. So if we check out the sites uh, enabled directory, we see a default file, but it's just a symlink to the real file that exists in the sites available directory. So typically you can just kind of throw configurations you might use into sites available and then symlink them, right? Create a symlink. Uh, into the sites enable directory, and then Nginx loads that because it finds uh, a file, a symlink into the in the uh, sites enable directory. Uh, we can see actually what configurations are loaded using Nginx t with sudo uh, dash capital T. That'll show you and dump out the configuration that Nginx is loading. It's loading some uh, fastcgi for PHP stuff. It's loading a default site configuration. See inside of a server block. And that is loading, um, well, any any name. This is like the default one that comes out of Nginx, comes with Nginx. And it's loading PHP stuff, which is why we see um, FastCGI configuration below here, right? Because this is including it. Uh, this is the MIME types include that we saw in the nginx.conf file. And these are the modules being loaded out of nginx.conf. And this is the nginx.conf file configuration itself. So nginx t will dump out all the loaded configurations so you can see if something's getting loaded or not and, and in what order. Nginx lowercase t, again with sudo, will tell you if there are any uh, configuration issues. And if there are, Nginx will refuse to reload or start if it stopped. So this is a good test to do after any changes you make to the configuration for Nginx. Let's just really quickly check out the sites enabled default one. Uh, this is the default configuration that comes with an Nginx installation. Um, that changes a little bit per operating system um, and where you're getting your Nginx package from, but this is a pretty typical default one. 
So this is listening on port 80 on the IPv4 and IPv6 networks of the server it's on. It's marked as the default server. So if Nginx doesn't know what server configuration to use for a web request, it's just going to go to this one because it's the default. So any web request we give Nginx is going to be served out of Vardo dub HTML. And then Nginx does a bunch of stuff to try to figure out how to find files that exist on the server uh, and serve them based on the URI given, right? So this location block is going to match any URI given to the server. It's kind of a, uh, a match. It's not an exact match. And then it's going to do this try files thing, which tries to find a file on the server, right? An exact match to the file. Otherwise, it's going to try to find a directory that matches the URI given, else it returns a 404. If it's given a directory, then it tries to find a file matching one of these names. Um, and if those don't exist, then it just goes to 404. Otherwise, it serves one of these, right? In the order it's given. That's what the index directive does, right? Um, try to find a file in vardo.html that matches one of these if we're giving nginx a uh, directory to search in. I have a whole video on try files. Uh, there's a little bit more to it, so you might want to check that out as well. And the last thing we're doing in here is just serving PHP files if the URI given matches a uh, PHP file that it finds on the server. So we can go ahead and see this in action. So if you do curl localhost, uh, we'll see the default nginx HTML page that is loaded. That's the one that was called Nginx, Debian, Nginx, I don't know, whatever. And then if we do curl localhost alt.php, because it's just a quick PHP file I um, whipped up on the server ahead of time, we'll see it's dumping out the uh, PHP info dump, which says like the version of PHP and the modules loaded and all that good stuff. So that configuration is working. OK, so that's just a quick tour of the Nginx configuration to see where stuff is loaded, how it's loaded, what loading schemes it uses. Uh, and a really quick explanation of a basic website that Nginx is loading. The last thing I want to point out to you is that um, you should check out the server config Nginx repository under the H5BP uh, project. This is a very solid set of Nginx configurations. This repository is meant to replace the entire Etsy Nginx directory. So um, you can either cherry pick configurations that you like from this, or you can just clone it and have it replace your entire Etsy Nginx directory, and it'll work fine. There's no like sites enabled and sites available stuff. Everything's just loaded out of conf.d, which is not a big deal. That's actually a little closer to like how um, Red Hat, Fedora, Amazon Linux servers work. That's the typical configuration for those. And otherwise, it's just great. It has uh, better defaults than what comes out with Nginx and has a bunch of stuff you can optionally use for security, for caching, uh, performance, TLS security, you know, SSL certificates, all that good stuff. It has a lot of good configuration you might want to use um, for that, right? So it'll help you block dot files so you don't end up having like your .emv file with passwords and stuff hosted to the public internet. Um, it will allow CertBot to work because CertBot uses a uh, dot file in part of the path to verify your ownership of a site to give you a certificate. And so it's just a really healthy set of configurations. Uh, the basics.conf file is the one that's kind of loaded by default, and it includes a bunch of stuff, but it doesn't include everything here. So, right? so some of these things are optional as well. So you should really uh, give this repository a good look and just see kind of what configurations you like for your use case, like cache busting static assets, that good stuff, and just use whatever configurations make sense for you. OK, so that's it for my little tour of Nginx configuration. Keep your eyes peeled on my channel because I'm going to be releasing more Nginx videos, and I'm going to dive into more specific topics like uh, multi-tenant configurations, right? So uh, wildcard subdomains, TLS configuration, Nginx configuration for all that stuff, and diving into a bunch of other topics. So keep a lookout.